NWA, AEW, Impact Wrestling, WWE. All the promotions in the world will not save them from my wrath. <laughs> Welcome to the Gump Report. You never know what you're going to get. I think this is Gump Report. What is this? Gump Report 28 or 29? I think it's 29. Gump Report 29. You never know what you're going to get. And this had... Well, here's the thing. I'm going to see if I can record this one and one more and upload two of them. Possibly. One for today, because I might upload two videos today. The NWA Power View, as well as Gump Report for A. McFoley. Because I really want to upload that video and upload this one this week. So I might upload McFoley today. And I will be up. I think, yeah, I probably would already have uploaded McFoley today. And this one will be for Friday. Which will go with Dynamite. And then I'll see what I can do for next week. But I don't want to wait for this video. Because I really do believe this is the best video to upload. And it needs to be talked about. Two things. What Triple H did. And Samoa Joe. Let's get into Triple H. And what happened. Now I've heard. I've heard about what Solomon has thought about this a little bit. A little bit. I did see Just Alex. And I did see... The wonderful JD of New York. Now, let's put this in perspective. What happened with Triple H? He was on one of the, well, he was on a, the post meeting. Well, um, not what is it called, post meeting. The um, post, um, like conference call. There you go. The conference call after the takeover. And he clearly stated that one of the major reasons that things are not going very well is because the fans are an issue. They ruin everything. They are an issue. They got a problem. They make things hard to get done. And this, gently, that's what he said. And he set off the internet. Pissed off a lot of fans with that. Now, is he correct? Yes. Let's make this clear, guys. I'm a wrestling fan, and I'm a reviewer of wrestling. I'm not the greatest reviewer that exists. Even though many of you have been kind enough to say I do a decent job. I, I'm, I'm still learning. Even after nine years of doing... Even after nine years, I'm still learning. <laughs> doing this. I never used to do this in my previous videos. Now I've been having more fun doing this. This is the type of stuff that I wish I had done years ago. But I was too afraid to try and express myself more than what I was doing. I was too afraid to be more of myself. And to be honest, I don't know who I am totally anyway. But these are the types of things that wrestling reviewers do. They bring out their personality while they review their stuff. But here's the thing. Us true fans of pro wrestling... No matter what style you care about, either hardcore, either high flying, either spot fest, either storytelling, or promos, or just the gimmick stuff of what like maybe people just love what Alexa Bliss is doing, with the with the ugh, I don't agree with it, but I understand people like it. There's always something for everyone. That is what Vince McMahon did get right at one point. He made sure his show had various stuff in it. Not everything worked, but having a huge amount of stuff that if it's focused, works well, that is what true wrestling is. Pro wrestling is to be like vaudeville. It gives you a huge amount of stuff in a short amount of time. And we went from people who loved that type of storytelling, that type of spectacle, to what we see today. Wrestling fans who used to be the, who are the descendants of those who went to theater and Broadville have become part of the show as well because we entertain each other and we entertain the wrestlers as well. Look, let's let's make this serious, baby. There are wrestlers that watch us. You can't tell me that JD from New York or just Alex or the, or the select daddy of Solid Monster is not being watched by wrestling wrestlers or promoters. 
or anyone who's in the wrestling business. They're watching us as much as we're watching them. That's the truth. But did Triple H tell the truth about pro wrestlers? Well, pro wrestling fans. Yes, to a certain extent. We ask a lot out of pro wrestling because of what they gave us years ago. They are fans who are from my generation who believe that the product is shitty because there's way too much spots. Then you have fans from the Attitude Era who are angry about the product now because the Attitude Era, the Era, Era was very edgy, was not like the Golden Age that, that went beyond the Golden Age, who broke down walls, who made cave fave bye-bye in a sense. There's still some that still follow it, but they broke down the wall and make it more varied. And there's wrestling fans like myself who like the Golden Age, who like the Attitude Era, and who also likes what's going on in between that time up until about, what, 2012, where wrestling had evolved again to become more realistic. Because, let's be honest, the Golden Age, they didn't have a lot of high spots all the time. Yes, there were wrestlers doing it, like the British Bulldogs, like the Rock and Roll Express, like the Rockers, which eventually morphed into... Shawn Michaels, HPK. Then you got what's going on with the Attitude Era, with The Rock, with Stone Cold Steve Austin, with, at one point, yes, the one who will not be named, and Eddie Guerrero, and... I, you could say a lot about Kurt Angle, the way he was, being so badly drugged up, but he devoted his heart to the business. Yes, he did. Kurt Henning did. People who were in those in-between moments of where the Golden Age and the Attitude Era was, who went on with that, and the ones like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, <coughs> CM Punk, those type of people. Shamrock also was still wrestling. Bobby Lashley was still wrestling. People who added more to this. The, um, um, oh, I forgot, um, um, the Amazing Red, Lance, you know what, you could say a lot about Lance Storm, but he contributed a lot to the business. He helped the business come along. Look, Taya Valkyrie wouldn't be who she is without Lance Storm. A lot of wrestlers wouldn't be without Lance Storm. He came up in the early 90s, to the, late 90s to the early 2000s. He proved how good he was. And I believe it was the late 90s to the early 2000s he started wrestling. I do believe he started like 8, 98, 99 or 2000. I don't remember when Lance Storm. But you could see all of that. And I'm that type of person, yes. I still believe that great storytelling is from the golden age, the 80s, 70s, and maybe some of the early 90s. I also believe in cutting edge stuff, like when it comes to the Attitude Era, taking good parts out of that. And also the 2000s, which did have ruthless aggression. Then you have Impact Wrestling at the time, TNA and ROH and MLW, who also managed to build people up and get them ready as well. All of that, I love, as long as you put them in the right context. Wrestling fans have been adamant, real fans, who don't just... Once in a while, watch the product. They go and see the product religiously. They save their money and spend tons of money on merchandise, going to the arenas, going to the pay-per-views, no matter what promotion it was. Willing to flip out for the pay-per-views on, online or at the time doing cable and pay-per-view or, or on demand. Those are the fans that Triple H insulted. Casual fans these days don't really care that much about, I, I, I don't want to be cruel, but let's be honest here about the casual fans. You got the wrestling fans, the true fans. I am a true fan. I am not a hardcore fan. That's this. I am a true fan. These are the ones that truly care about the business. But the hardcore fans, are the ones up here who know absolutely everything, these are the ones that are most loudest out of the shit that you see. I am here. These are casual fans. The fans that will watch anything. Because you know why? They grew up in the era of, well, there's something on TV, I'll watch it. If it interests me for a little while, fine. It'll distract me until I do something else. 
those are the casual fans. But those are also the casual fans that can be converted into true fans or hardcore fans. And that's something, I'm sure that's something not many people are going to say. But that's the truth. You got the casual fans who are people who've heard about wrestling. And once they see it, they stay either in one of three categories. They stay where they are. Roughly speaking, they'll stay where they are. Like, I've seen it. Yeah, I've heard about it. I've seen it. Eh, I can take it or leave it. That is a casual fan. And then a casual fan can become a true fan of wrestling, which is like myself. I don't know everything. I'm somewhat knowledgeable. Particularly, I'm an old-ass man. But I am a true fan of rap pro wrestling. I love it. I believe in the wrestling. I do believe that sometimes kayfabe is important. Sometimes it's not. You can have best parts of all the different eras of Golden Age, of the Attitude Era, of the Ruthless Aggression, and the TNA, ROH, MLW, and anything in between era which adds realism and athleticism to it. I believe you can add bits of each one and make a show great. That is a true fan. And then you have the hardcore fan where they could go to this, where they will eat, sleep, and believe in wrestling, and they will be either one or two things. One, wrestling reviewers who are really adamant, who understand everything about, like a Dave Meltzer, or they transition into wrestling themselves. That's what it comes down to. And that is the one that truly got insulted by Triple H. Because look, you got wrestling fans from the time of Triple H, Paul Levesque. He was like this as a kid, then he became a fan, he loved it so much he became a true fan, and then he went to hardcore mode where he eventually decided to become a wrestler himself. He did not understand what the fuck he said. Now, me personally, I'm not angry because he's not 100% lying. But you got to understand the context of what he did. Not just how much he pissed you off and what he said. He made it very clear. Fans don't understand what they're doing. They spoil everything. They always ask for too much. Well, no shit, Sherlock. You worked in the era that people is using the yardstick for. Here. This is... The era you came from, the attitude era, you bitch. <laughs> and then you're in the era that's way down here. And people want it to be more near here. They're not asking for the attitude era 100% to come back because of how the landscape has changed. Look, the meme movement happened. People are very insulted very easily. They destroy you on Twitter. And remember, people getting destroyed on Twitter a lot of times will kill themselves because of it. So a lot of people oversensitive. So it's understandable. People remember this. They don't expect it to be here or above. They expect it to be somewhere near the middle. You get a middle ground of this. But it's here. And he used to have it. Understand, as the guy who created NXT with Shawn Michaels, eventually with Road Dog, and with William Regal. William Regal has given a lot to NXT. He isn't just a face of the general manager who's now working with Samoa Joe, which I will get to in a minute. But he's also worked in the back. So this is the Attitude Era. They were about roughly here. They were not here. They were here. They were exactly where the hardcore fans wanted. True fans were also... See, hardcore fans who are going to become wrestlers, wrestling reviewers, they loved NXT because it had great aspects of the Attitude Era, but also didn't go all the way to the Attitude Era. They didn't need to. Then you got the true fans who like it because it has aspects of the Attitude Era, but also has aspects of the Golden Age. And he managed to get people from the Indies who are in the current era that is now known Impact Wrestling, RH, MLW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, AAA, All Japan Pro Wrestling, because you can add them as well. All those people he brought in, which made everyone happy. But now the product is not there, 
and now he's insulted the people who could become like him or who could be like a Dave Meltzer who would talk about what he did during the Attitude Era. So that makes it stupid. Now, I'm not mad at him. Sorry for the noise of year bird. I can't stop that. But is that stupid? He made a serious mistake. Not because he admitted what the fans are like, but because as a guy himself who created the era that they're re reflecting the product by, he didn't want to acknowledge it. Remember what we're talking about here, guys. We're talking about a guy who helped create this era that everyone is mostly putting the, Brent, the, the yardstick to, that his own version in the WWE was imitating to a certain extent. It wasn't exactly the same. It was different. It took aspects of all of the different eras and made it its own. And now the product has gone down and he doesn't want to accept the fact that everyone is still seeing it like this. And he's from it. And instead of saying, look, he was angry about something. That's obvious. That's the reason why he said it and took a, a shot at the fans. It's obvious. He was pissed off because nothing's working. He's stuck in a position that's not going well. Look, you can say a lot about Paul Levesque. He does know what he was doing in the business. And ever since he moved to USA, went two hours, everything has been ruined. Because Vince wanted that part of his company to take out a rinky-dink little show called AEW. And it didn't work. So he's under stress. And he's pissed off because he's under stress because he's still at two hours. That a lot of his talent has been taken in the main roster. And all that talent that he worked on that actually was doing great on NXT that people would have easily transitioned onto the main roster have been buried. So he's pissed. And he took it out on the fans. He forgot where he came from. They are seeing what he did. And he's blaming them for looking at what he did. And that shows he's stupid for not realizing that he screwed up. That he shouldn't have gone after the fans because it messed with what he did. I know that sounds a little like, wait, you're saying that's messing with his ego. No. It isn't messing with his ego. His ego is still as big as Vince McMahon's. That's the truth. His ego is can be and probably near Vince McMahon's ego. It probably is. But here's the thing, guys. When it comes down to it, what he did, as far as I'm concerned, is simple. He screwed himself up, not because the fans will stop watching NXT. It's because the fans will still watch it, but they'll be quiet. Look at how, how the show has been. The fans are frustrated what's already been going on because of the pandemic. They're still being forced to wear masks. They're probably, they're allowed to be near one another, but they're still being forced to wear masks. And this, worse, they're coming to the arenas, wanting to see something new, and I still think Vince still has a, a influence on the show, which now the fans are staying silent. The fans are silent. The fans are almost silent. Very rarely they show any interest. It's not because they're wearing masks. It's because the product is boring. And he thought, well, the fans that don't like it, just go the fuck away. Wrong. The fans that still like it will do one thing. They'll stay silent, which makes the show look worse. So I've heard just Alex, as well as for JD saying, hopefully things will be better if they move to Sale University. Nope. It won't get better. They think going to a new venue is going to make it better. They're hoping it'll go better. I don't see it getting better because of two things. One, Vince possibly still having some influence on the creative. Or maybe Paul himself trying to get on to good graces with Vince is toning it down from what it should be to make him happy to show that he's trying to do something. And two, by saying that boneheaded comment... 
that boneheaded comment will now destroy NXT. Because the people will still come. No matter if they stay at that place they're at now or going over to Sale Sale University. It doesn't make a difference. They'll go. And if they don't like what they see, they're not going to boo it like they normally do. Like they used to. Or they may just have an attitude. No. They'll go silent. That will kill the product worse than people trying to hijack it like they did with Daniel Bryan. But that's just me. Now, let's talk about Samoa Joe. We need to do this. Samoa Joe got fired to get at Adnan Verk and save more money. Adnan Verk didn't work. Now they got a new guy named Sniff. He's in there now. And he looks like he might work. But here's the thing, guys. A lot of people are angry. Even me was angry at first. Thinking that this is wrong. This is bullshit. Why did he go back? It's stupid. Well, here's the thing, guys. We don't know if Joe can wrestle. This is going to be the question for the next month or two or three or five. If Joe goes back into wrestling more than once or twice, because he still has a concussion problem, if he can wrestle more than twice, then he did make a big mistake going back to NXT. Honestly. Yes, Triple H called him back and said, look, I want you to come back. I will pay you a certain amount. Probably not the same amount he was doing as a commentator or when he was wrestling. But he will pay him. This is when he was a wrestler. Maybe went down when he was a commentator. Now it'll probably be here. It'll probably be even less. But if he comes back and he can wrestle, that was the biggest mistake he made. Now, if he comes back and he cannot wrestle more than just once or twice, and he stays either an enforcer or... Or I think he'll transfer over to commentation. I believe he'll go into the commentator team. They're going to call up, possibly. I don't think they will. But maybe they'll call up a great... I know a lot of people don't really say much about Bray Wyatt. But I do believe that he's worked well enough that he could go on to SmackDown. He could be on SmackDown. He could. So they may call him up to SmackDown and work with um, McAfee once McAfee is more used to working, maybe, maybe. And then we'll have Samoa Joe on commentation because if he can't wrestle, he can't stay as an enforcer forever. Sooner or later, he has to get in the ring more than once or twice. Like I said, if he can't really generally wrestle, and he stays an enforcer, it'll be a waste of time because no one can hurt him. Because it will be a waste of time for the show's storylines. So if he can wrestle, eventually he'll transition back in and eventually he will wrestle to a certain extent. Maybe a limited run of wrestling. Maybe. Or he'll go back full time. I don't know. But if he can't wrestle, he will stay an enforcer for a couple of months and then he will transition over to commentary. That is where I think he will go. But here's the thing for me. Whether he can't wrestle anymore or whether he can, I don't believe it was the wisest thing for him to go back to WWE. Because when it comes down to it, guys, Vince still makes the final decisions. No matter how much you see Triple H letting him come back, Vince will get rid of him like this. It will happen. And I do believe it will happen again. I do not believe that he's going to stay very long. I believe he may stay another year. And counting on if he signs a big contract, I don't think Vince is going to keep it. I think he's going to break it eventually, and then he's going to release him again. That's what I think is going to eventually happen. I believe that Samoa Joe will be eventually released again. I don't believe he's going to keep him. I just don't see it happening. And worse yet, you don't know how Joe is going to be treated on NXT. Now I know people say well NXT is different. It was different. It's not anymore. I do not buy how NXT is working now. NXT used to be a certain place. When I was watching it. And I did watch it for a while. 
there was a certain thing that was going on. It was great on the roster, and they did great in the ring, and did June. Well, generally, good storylines. They weren't a lot of storylines, but they were okay. Once they transitioned to the roster, all those wrestlers got buried. And then NXT had to rebuild itself every time when so many of their wrestlers were called up. Now, NXT is its own brand. And it's only a matter of time before Vince starts calling up a good amount of people, which is going to hurt the brand. And no matter what anyone said, saying, well, they got two or three groups already ready to go into NXT. It doesn't make a difference. You still have to build those people. And with the product the way it is now, where they're not... Look, like I said earlier, the Attitude Era. Before NXT went to USA, they were here. They weren't here. They weren't here. They were in between here and here. They were here. Now they're here. NXT is not the same. So rebuilding stars again is way more harder. And he's going to have to deal with that. And I don't know I don't know about you. Counting on no matter if you can wrestle or not, frustration will build on NXT roster. Frustration will build in the performance center. If you got most of the wrestlers that are on SmackDown or Raw who are from NXT being forced to go back to the performance center and being told, well, you can't do this. You need this. You need that. Do you not think that's going to be frustrating even on NXT? Sooner or later, it will catch up. And I truly believe it will. But he made his decision. And we don't know how long he's going to stay. It might be a limited run. Or he could be there for the long haul, at least until Vince gets rid of him. I don't know. But this is just my point of view. I hope it makes some sense. And I hope you enjoyed this Gunt Report. Leave a like and a comment, my friends. Tell others that the Gump Report exists. Hopefully they'll like it. I'm not expecting to be seen much. I'm lucky that anyone even likes the show. But, hope you enjoy it. Peace.